Right, it's been a while since I've done a video, so let's do a video. You can see in the centre of the screen right now, is this, which is a Neo Trinky from Adafruit. And Neo Trinky are asking, what is that? It's uh, um, one of Adafruit's boards, a Trinky, but shrunk down into a USB device, as you can see in the pictures that are scrolling in the top left of the screen. Um, it's a USB device, plugged straight into a USB port, and you program away using the Arduino IDE, or in this case, CircuitPython. That's my preference. The board is really simple. It's not one of these expansive lots of GPIO pins like a Pico or a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino. It's just a simple device for playing around with. We've got, as you can see in the pictures, four NeoPixels, all powered by an AT Sam D21 chip. Again, it's a Cortex M0 Plus, I believe, at 48 megahertz. Not a speed demon. It's not a Pico running at 133 megahertz. Plenty of juice to do what we need to do. Four NeoPixels and two buttons. You can see on the, let's see, not the USB end, the other end, like some gold contacts. There are two gold contacts, button one, button two. Those are capacitive touch buttons, and you can press them to do something. So, I've been messing around with this overnight. I only got it yesterday, Saturday, and it's Sunday today, so I had a good play with the piece of kit last night, and I've made something quite handy for me. So I do a lot of work in the Linux terminal. I've, I use Ubuntu all day long. So I do, made something out of this, so when I press one side, it loads one application, press the other side, it loads another application all written in CircuitPython. So I've got it in my breakout device here, USB breakout device, which I never really use apart from camera work. So this is the first time it's been used. Oh yeah, here is a spare Neo Trinky I bought. Ooh, frame rate's awful on this camera today. There we go. They're about six and a half pounds, so six pound fifty from Pimeroni in the UK. Obviously you can get them from Adafruit. I'm not sure how, how well stock is at the moment. It was out of stock last time I checked quite popular. So as I say I've programmed this in CircuitPython. So as you can see on the screen there is a little screen down there with the demo in place and you can see my RGB keypad from uh, for the Pico and Pimaroon there as well and lots more Pico stuff. It's just Pico all over this desk right now. You can also see a Visual Studio, Microsoft Visual Studio and I've written some circuit Python direct onto this because it just has a file on there called code.py that we write code to and it runs. I'm not going to go through it line by line because that is just boring. I'm going to give you a quick overview of what it's doing so you can understand what each line is doing. First off the bat we have the import section. So I'm importing libraries to work with time to control the pace of the project. So how long lights are on, how long lights are off. Uh, board for interacting with the GPIO on the board itself. NeoPixel to make those four NeoPixels shine. I also need to install a um, Neo, uh, NeoPixel.mpy file into the libs folder. Easy peasy, Adafruit's got a great guide on that. Touch IO, if I'm using the touch inputs. Uh, USB HID, USB human interface device, so I can use it as a keyboard or a mouse, in this case a keyboard. And then I set it up as a keyboard. I set the layout to be US, there isn't a UK layout which would be great for me but yeah, it's not a big problem. And then key code for using certain key codes which are like control, alt, that sort of thing, tab. So I then set up an object called KBD, I then set the layout to be US, I then say where my NeoPixels are and they are on board.neopixel, this has built in object to reference to four NeoPixels and there are four NeoPixels. And then set up a new object called Pixels which says okay you've got NeoPixels, they're on pixel pin so board.neopixel. Neo, uh, Num number of pixels is four, brightness is 0 0.01. Even at 0 0.1 it was a little too bright for comfortable use for just intended purpose. Um, I then set up the two touch interfaces so touch one, touch two which are the gold contacts over here at the top. And then I have a startup sequence. So here's a startup sequence from lines 20 to 28. Uh, Pixels.fill, and then it's a, a, a tuple or a tuple, I can never remember how to say that. 
255, 0, 0. In other words, turn red on, full, green off, blue off. Pixel show is used to show the colour change. Sleep for half a second and then do green on full blast. Show, wait for half a second, blue on full blast. Show, wait for half a second. Just a simple start, start script to say, hey, I'm working. So, the meter all. While true, the main loop. If touch one value, so if it's been touched, so if it's true, print touch one and then show the color red but then send a keyboard command keyboard send keyboard control alt t in other words press control alt t it'll do it for a split second then it'll release all the keys it then waits a second because i found if i instantly put the next line in it would cause an issue where sometimes it would go in the wrong box so I'm going to give the machine just a little bit of time just to open up the window. So Control alt t in Ubuntu Linux opens a terminal. And in this case, it waits a second, then it's going to type in as a string bpytop, which is a Python um, task manager that I use quite a lot. Then I send the key code enter, press the enter key, and then I release. So if that's if, that's if touch one is, is touched, it will do that. But what if touch two is pressed? Well, it'll tell me touch two is pressed. It'll then glow green. And then it sends control alt T again. It releases the keys. It waits for a second. It's opening a terminal again. And then it sends D message. D message dash W dash T, which uh, constantly checks D message. So the, the back end uh, log to show of any action such as USB keys been inserted or um, any new drives been inserted or mounted. It also tells you where the ports are for them, like slash dev slash tty acmo. Uh, T gives me human readable text and times, which is fantastic. Never knew that in 20 years using Linux. Completely slipped my mind. Then someone mentioned it the other day, like, wow, okay. Anyway, um, last lines. We put the D message command in, we press enter, we release all the keys. And that's if the two buttons are pressed. But if they're not pressed, the pixels, the LEDs, the NeoPixels, are just off completely. So there we go. So I'm going to do a live demo, case of death. Let's see what happens. I'm just going to make sure the code reloads. You'll see here. Ready? Let's go. Red, green, blue. Tells me it's ready to go. You should see now when I press one of these, fingers crossed, Something low, so press that one. Green, so that's button two. And that's showing D message running. So if I take out my key here, you can see it's been disconnected. Put it back in. It's in again, it tells me what, what it is, where it is, what it's doing. Great. Okay, let's close that window. And let's do the other one. So touch one, which is nearest to me running BPI top and it's going to tell me my system stats. Here we go. My machine is running quite well. It's running quite cool actually as well. Yes, it's an i7-3770 from all those years ago. But it does mean it works well. So yeah, so that is all written in CircuitPython using the Neo Trinky, which only cost me I think about six and a half pounds. Yeah, I've got two of them because I always get two of the new boards when they come out. Because one I like to keep as showroom fresh for photographs, and the other one I will just completely go nuts on and do soldering and all sorts of weird stuff. So, anyway, that is it. That's the new piece of kit to play with. If you've got a few quid spare, get one for a play. It's not going to be your be all and end all board that does everything that you want it to do but it's fun to use as a human interface device with NeoPixels and have a bit of fun with a simple board to play with. That's it for now. Cheers.